Thank you for tuning in to Faith in Jesus Ministries. My name is Mike Barclay, the Preacher Man. Oh, this is a day the Lord had made. He had made me glad. We're part of TV and the Trinity Broadcasting Network. They keep it in the family. Every day, Jesus says you're going to be prosperous and successful. Wake up every day expecting it. Never go to bed disappointing if you didn't show up that day. One day, it's working its way for the realm of God to you, into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You get up expecting every day. It's like your birthday every day. Promise you find you expect. 7,000 promises in the Bible. Never not get up expecting. What is the fight to maintain your focus? Whatever you focus on the most, that's what you put in first place in your life. Prayer should be, God, help me not to focus on something unproductive. This is Brother Mike with Faith in Jesus Ministries. I'm here to teach you about patience today. Have some damn patience. When that person is in line in front of you at Kroger and they got to put this some something back, have some damn patience. Whenever you're in line on the freeway and it's raining, have some damn patience. Whenever the waiter is taking too long, have some damn patience. Not like the world defines patience put up with. Not like you're at a red light and you're in traffic or something. You're being patient. You're putting up with it. You're putting up with the red light. You're putting up with the traffic. Her patience means consistently, commonly the same. Changing. Immutable. You started off believing that you're healed, then you continue believing that you're healed. Even though the doctor saw something, you continue to believe you're healed. Even though you felt something, continue to believe you're healed. No, you don't see no changes. And you continue to believe you're healed. And then once you get to the end of that, the Bible says, let patience have our perfect work. You may be in perfect entire, wanting nothing. That's the number one reason a lot of Christians ain't seeing manifestations of their blessings. Because they're not keeping their faith on the field long enough. They keep bringing it in the house, putting it in the closet, and get to bed. You don't have a faith problem. Somebody says, my faith is not big enough. Faith is not strong enough. The Bible says you only need faith the side of a mustard seed. Move a mountain, the problem's not with your faith, then what is it? Don't keep your faith out in the field long enough to win the game. An endurance problem. Don't remember when Jesus was walking on the water and he told Peter to come towards him? And Peter said, Lord, if it be thy will, I will walk to you on this water. And Jesus said, come. In that one word, he had confidence, come. And Jesus said, come. And he came. And then the wind and the waves started whipping up against him. And then he lost his faith because he kept his eyes. He lost vision of Jesus. And that's what we're doing today. We're losing focus on Jesus. We need to refocus our lives on Jesus, on being like Jesus, on people seeing Jesus in us and loving each other in Jesus' name. It's not that hard to do to love your neighbor. Black, white, Mexican, uh, Muslim, it just don't matter. Most of us are Christians inside and don't know it. We all look to see what happens when we die. We all wonder what happens when we die. Well, the Bible gives us a perfect example. We're going to heaven when we die. We're going to be given planets when we die. We're going to be given a star. All of our, can you imagine getting a star? What What is a diamond when you can have a star and you'll be able to populate this planet with the word and like you say the word hippopotamus and the hippopotamus shows up. You're going to be able to speak things into existence with the word in Jesus name. That's what the Lord's will is. He's a creator teaching creators to create. But Peter had confidence, and when Jesus said, come, he came. So when Jesus is calling you right now, you should come. And a man born out of a woman walked on the water. Confident about Jesus. That's faith. Faith to walk on water. He got his, the winds and the waves came up, and he got his attention off of Jesus, and he began to sink. How many of us have sank into hell because of he lost focus in Jesus. After it happened, Jesus grabbed him and both of them walked back to the boat.
Don't come to me with this thing that Peter failed. He walked before he failed. He failed, he walked with Jesus. How many of you want to walk with Jesus? Brother Mike wants to walk with Jesus. You're operating under the law, you bound to sink. But when you operate with Jesus, he keep you up afloat. Operate under grace when you got Jesus. When you got Jesus walking with you, Jesus will walk you back to the boat. High and dry. I don't know how many times you fall into your life, but I know somebody that'll pick you up, grab you up, and walk you together. They walk with me, Lord. Walk together with the Lord. No falling when you walk with Jesus. Boats don't sink that Jesus are on. And faith in Jesus' ministry is a boat that won't sink because it's bound on Jesus. And he's waterproof. Jesus got you. He asks it, why is it that you have weak faith? No way you can call walking on water weak faith strong faith. Never did it. I never did it. He's talking about is the endurance of your faith. It's if you have a short burst of faith, like a short race, like a sprint that didn't last all day. Short burst of energy. Why is it your faith was short and it's endurance? Paul, he put his faith in the closet when he saw the wind and waves. You need patience in order to keep your faith out. Faith and patience are power twins. Patience is necessary to work with your faith to keep your faith in the field. Bring your faith in the house until you're totally satisfied. Bring our faith in before we're totally satisfied and put it in the closet. Without the manifestation. Bring it in without the healing, without the financial blessing, without the deliverance. You can say you're delivered and put your faith out. God, I'm here to serve you. To take possession of it, but you quit on it before it's finished. You are in need of patience. You are in need of patience. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are in need of patience. Hebrews 10.36, for you have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God. Hebrews 10.36, that you might receive the promise. Faith is also defined as confidence. Faith helps you keep your faith and confidence working. Your faith without your confidence, you sink. You get manifestation. You know how long this game is, but you got to keep it out on the field. A year may go by. Keep it out on the field. I will keep it on the field because if it's not on the field, it may be five years. Look at verse 37. It says, yet in a little while he shall come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. Can any man draw back the just, those that have been declared righteous? They have confidence in the word. The word, what it says it's going to do, it's going to do. They live confidently in the finished works of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10.38 says, If any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in them. Thou just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, it will have no pleasure in it. We are not of them who draw back. We that are Christians stand proud. Out loud, I don't draw back. But we are of them to the believing of the saving of the soul. Religion paints this picture that doesn't give it any practical application. The law, as opposed to being saved and base, all will show you what you're doing wrong, but it won't do nothing to change you. What religion does, it just tells you what's wrong with you, it tells you how to change it. The difference in going to a church that just tells you what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. Bad, your mama bad, your dog bad, all y'all going to hell about 12 o'clock. Ain't nobody want to hear all that. They ain't got time for that. I'm going to go to church to get beat up. I'm going to go where I can get the grace of God and understand what I need to do to see things change. Amen? I stop right there. That'd be enough for you to work on. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what the word says. Here's the finished works. I'm confident about what Jesus has done. The answer is yes. Every day you ask that question to yourself. Am I still confident about it? Yes. Next week, am I still confident about it? Yes. Next year, am I still confident about it? Yes. Every day Jesus says you're going to wake up, be prosperous and successful. Every day you should wake up expecting it like it's your birthday. Never go to bed disappointed. Didn't show up that day. Because one day, hallelujah, it's working its way from the realm of God to you. As soon as you prayed about it, it's on its way to you. In Jesus' name, coming on into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I promise you, find you expect it. A thousand generations. In Jesus' name, he'll bless you. Don't get disappointed and quit because our God never lets us down. I need a patience. Our need of patience. Patience is a powerful thing. That's the one thing you see Christians lack. Healing is already finished and you get healed by faith. A friend of mine went to the doctor last week. They said, we're so sad to inform you that you're going blind. Oh, this guy, I know how radical he is. So what you say? I ain't going blind. In the name of Jesus, I ain't going blind. You're going blind because you're diabetes. So I apologize. You're losing your sight.
stood up and said, let me tell you something. I'll never go blind in the name of Jesus. I'll have use of my sight to the day I leave this planet. He would not take that off the field. Then we went back to the doctor and he said, I don't know what happened, but you were healed. He says, I know what happened. I was healed in the name of Jesus because I told him he 2,000 years ago, he took care of my blindness and my sickness and my healing in Jesus' name. 2,000 years ago, he did that for me. What's happening? He had confidence in what was already done. I put his faith to work. He had need of patience. He would not change. All the symptoms had been dismissed. Around 70 years old now, he said, I tried to tell them people, trying their best to convince me I was going to lose my sight. Trying my best to convince them it ain't never going to happen. I'd never be without my sight while I'm in this body. Hello, Honda Road, Shaky D. The story about Apostle Paul in a boat. Chapter 27, verse 14. But not long after it arose, against it a tenuous wind called Eurycliandus. You're climbed on. You're old climbed it. You know, it's got to be a strong wind. Back then, they were giving names to wind like they are doing the hurricanes today. Euro Clyden. Oh, that sounds like a strong wind. Came across y'all's yard. Euro Clyden. Being exceedingly tossed with the tempest. Next day, they lighten the ship. A strong, strong hurricane. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer. There will not be any loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, Acts 27, 23, whose I am and whose I serve. And we know when angels show up, the first thing they say is, fear not. Don't fear what's promised won't come to pass. Fear not, Paul, thou shalt be brought before Caesar. Oh, God has given all thee to sail with you. Ain't going to happen to you because I got destiny on you. The reason you're walking in fear is destiny all over you. You're clothed in destiny. Verse 25, wherefore, sir, be of good cheer, for I believe God. I believe God. You walk around with good cheer. It shall be even as it is told to me. He just told us some stuff, right? Go around telling people, I believe God, and then you're depressed. You believe God, you're the joy of the Lord. There'll be no loss of life. The ship's going to have some issues. It said, by his stripes, you are healed. Good cheer. Believe. I'm going to be healed. Hallelujah. Man, it's a strange place for a preacher to go to a hospital with a bunch of unbelievers. You want to say something to bless somebody, heal somebody, and they say, we don't want to hear what you got to say. Looking on grieving right now. This guy's dying. The doctor say he's going to die. We don't want to hear that church stuff. Way to go. You believe in for God on the bed, and then the next minute, there you go. There he is. About joy. You're in the presence of the Lord. You know, some deep Christians want to get spiritual and say, come back in Jesus' name. That's why nobody ever comes back. I mean, you kidding me? What in this world do you think can match being with Jesus? Stuff over all the covering and the shield of saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. The fiery darts, missiles, whereby which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. What is that? But it's the shield of faith. It's the word of God. It's when a dart comes that says you're going to die, and you lift up that Bible. And it says, you are healed in the name of Jesus. By his stripes, you are healed. It'll quench that dart. That, you don't lift up your Bible and stop that dart. It'll get into your head. And it'll get into your heart. And it'll poison your soul. And given a shield of faith, it's the word of God. When that master came forward and says, your daughter is dead, Jesus said, fear not, only believe. Glory be to God. I sense a miracle is going to happen on this YouTube internet thing. You're in need of patience. I got on the treadmill last week. How long did you walk for a minute? Believe in something to commit that much patience. Willing to stand forever. You won't be standing that long. How we live in. We're not paying attention to what the word says to get manifestation happening. The mic will build your works. Build your belief in the finished works of Jesus. I'm a confident Christian. It's came to restore what the enemy stole in the Garden of Eden. And you know the law is dead. Grace and mercy replace the law. They're under grace. And accidentally get your personality. This didn't happen to get your height, your look, skin color, your gifts. He designed you on purpose in his image and his likeness. Either way you are. Have what you need to fulfill your destiny. If you'd like to know you're going to heaven, just say this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come to my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If you said that simple prayer with us, we'd like to believe you got saved. Get into a good Bible preaching church. Put God first place. He'll take you places you never dreamed. Stay tuned for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and show you his kindness and his love and his mercy. 
May he crown your head with the crown of favor. In Jesus' name, may he open the windows of heaven and pour blessings upon your life. You have no room to receive. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. And may they get the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And thank you for partnering with Faith in Jesus Ministries. We're totally debt free. That's why I can send you the CD of the month, which has all of my sermons on it, 105 sermons, in Jesus' name. We can only do that because we're totally debt free. That means if you send me $20, the whole $20 goes to the world of evangelism. If you send me $10 million, the whole $10 million goes to the world of evangelism. In the name of Jesus, spread the gospel around the world. Because people don't go to hell because they sin. They go to hell because they don't know the name of Jesus. Jesus holds the keys to the hell, death, and the grave. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. May they get the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. We bless the gift and we bless the giver. In the name of Jesus, 30, 60, 100 fold, and a thousand times return for blessing faith in Jesus' name. Uh, with seed money in Jesus name we thank you for your tithes and your offerings and your gifts Lord we thank you for your gifts Lord thank you in Jesus name may they get the Holy Spirit in Jesus name but we for your January membership and partnership with us we will include the sermon of the month with that and you'll get that every single month for your donation of any amount in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord we set up a GoFundMe account to feed the children in Africa. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name. Miracle money, miracle money, miracle money from heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. La 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 la